Marley, and today I'm here with the start of a brand new series on my channel, and it focuses on makeup from 1900 all the way up to the early 2000s, and I'm going to be doing the makeup trends that were popular during that time period. So today I bring you makeup from the 1900s. 1920 is when more um, types of makeup we know today came about. So before that, there wasn't a whole lot available. So that is what I am going to do today. So the first thing that most women in the 1900s started with is what many of us start with today, and that is a moisturizer. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, put my moisturizer on. Okay, so I'm all moisturized, and um, the next thing we do is foundation. And um, the look that most women sought after in the 1900s was the very fair porcelain doll-like skin. Because if you were tan, you were considered to be a low class because you worked outside in the sun all day and everything. So many women spent their time under an umbrella keeping out of the sun or just inside. So um, your face was much paler than ours are now. Which I find to be very ironic because now we're like lather on the self tanner, make ourselves look tan, you know. So, this video I'm going to be doing the complete opposite and making myself have porcelain skin. And we are going to see how that goes. So, the sequence they did was moisturizer, powder, rouge, which different sources said rouge to be the actual foundation, and other sources said it to be blush. So I'm not really sure which, like I really don't know. So I'm going to assume they did not have two foundations, so goodbye. I'm gonna start out with my powder and I'm just using my MAC Studio Fix because this is my winter shade and it is extremely light right now. So yeah, and it is an N3. I believe. Yes, the lady matched me kind of late, so, you know. But um, I'm going to use the sponge because brushes, not quite a thing yet. So we're just going to use our little sponges to pat it. Oh, my. Onto our faces. Man, I wish they used concealer. I don't want to use a brush, but at the same time, I, I like, literally can't. I can't, it takes forever with this sponge. I'm just gonna do it anyways. Because, you know what? This is for you guys, so. I'm gonna do a mixture of two different powders, so um, if this isn't looking extremely light, don't worry. We'll make it look light. And even back then, the blotting papers were a thing too. I honestly don't own blotting papers because I don't need them. I have extremely dry skin. My skin, anytime I put like powder on it, goes, ah, please don't do that. So, done with their powder. And then they then proceeded with their rouge. I'm going to take that as blush, but I may be wrong. And they didn't just, you know, they didn't reach and be like, Okay, I'm gonna put on my blush now. No, 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 no. They used geraniums. So I just have a few and I'm just gonna, and they smell bad, like I hate the way the geraniums smell, so we're just gonna like take the petals and like, color. I like wasn't even expecting any color, so. Well, well, well. And um, to be seen with makeup, to be seen with the fact that you are actually have makeup on your face was considered to be looked down upon and also to be seen applying or buying cosmetics was also, also looked down and frowned upon. So, um, which is funny because now we're like, 
wing out the eyeliner, put on the red lips. Not saying I don't do that, but I'm just saying that's what we do now. And that's what we, society thinks we should do. But back then, you weren't even supposed to be seen wearing makeup. It was like the no makeup makeup thing was all people, most people wore. So. I, wow. People then were onto something, goodness gracious. I'm gonna keep do going with like more petals because um, the powder kind of like soaks it up. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not thrilled about that, but. I'm just kind of getting some of the color on my fingers and then not too bad it kind of looks a little like a just a blob of color on your face but hey and you know so now that I have all these flower petals everywhere trim well oh, nope there's more okay we have our blush, and now we take more powder. And I'm gonna actually just try out a different powder, um, because yeah, this is the Wet n Wild Cover All Press Powder. I've actually hit pan because I use this for Halloween makeup, and I had to use a lot of powder, so it took like three uses for that makeup to use up. But I'm gonna again get my sponge and start just. Getting some of that powder. Um. Oh, I hope I don't like erase the blush. If you um need a really inexpensive pressed powder, this one's actually good, from what I have used it um for. Um, it's like really, really silky. Like it's. It's actually really good. Perfecto. I'm sure we have to powder the eyelids. How am I looking? Oh, so cakey. I love how this is like so obvious. It's like, oh my gosh, that girl needs to play off the powder. But I think the blush is still showing up a little. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to. I have to put a little bit more on. Just a little. And again, I'm just like. Rolling the petal between my fingers, getting some of that raspberry color. And uh, I'm just, but like that powder took all the life out of my face, so. Okay, so maybe a little goes a long way. This looks really harsh on the camera, but when I tell you, I like promise you it's not. Whoa, that's so weird. That powder must have like some like invisible glow to it. It's really weird because, does that look, whoa. Does that look glowy all to you? No, it's matte. I will swatch it to you and prove it. It's mad. But I'm telling you, so after blending all this on my face and I had some of the petal the color from the petals um on my finger, look, it's like glowy. That's like so weird. Oh my gosh, I like can't even get over that. That's like so weird. So I will take a picture of myself and insert it in here just so you can see like my face doesn't look as, like, as it does on camera. I don't know why it's showing up so weird on the camera. But. I am going to add a little bit more powder to my cheeks because you, um, when you put a liquid over a powder, it kind of melts down the powder underneath. So that's why you put cream blush on before you set your face. Um, most people do anyways. And, yeah, so I look like a clown on camera. I don't off camera, but... I kind of look like I have, like, acne or something under there. I don't, but looks like it. 
Anyway, so we're going to move on now. Um, for eyes, they did just like some gray, very, very subtly on their eyes. For my Naked Smoky palette, I know I'm not, I'm not doing a smoky eye, but it has a good gray in it. So, does this bother you all that I haven't taken the film off and I've had this like for a little while? Sorry, it does. Oh, I might have to, I can't see in the mirror. I'm just going to take a little bit of Password. This grayish color, gray tape color. And have to, I'm sorry. I just did it a little. Oh, geez. This powder is everywhere. So I just took that in the crease a little just to try to like do something. And, like take like a really small amount and just kind of like sweep and over my lids. I keep saying I'm like, I'm not gonna use brushes and then I pick up an eye brush. Wow, Marley. I'm sorry, it's kind of like a force of habit, so. Well, I don't even think that's like, that's like undetectable, but I just did a little bit of gray, like a tiny little bit of gray. And then the, the thing I found really interesting was for mascara, they used burnt matches. And I burnt both ends of them. I didn't know how was how many I was gonna need, so. And they just put them, like rubbed them on their eyelashes. And it didn't necessarily like add length or anything, but it just makes your eyelashes black. Don't worry, these matches were not, they're not, recently burnt like I didn't just burn them like two seconds ago I'm not searing off my eyelashes nothing like that I'm cool and people in the 1900s didn't um their brows that wasn't really a thing until the 1930s that like really does like absolutely nothing oh I broke one makeup was mostly reserved for women of the stage. Look at my hands. They're like glowy and I don't know why. Maybe it's a mixture I found my moisturizer with powder. Okay. So the last thing we do is um I just I just want to be clear that did like nothing. Maybe it might it made my lashes make maybe a little bit black, blacker but like not really anything. So I guess that's what they wanted though. They didn't want it to be obvious that they were wearing makeup. So, um, we're going to go in with a lip stain. They did more of a stain effect. And I have no desire to put geranium petals by my mouth. So, I'm just going to, for the final thing, um, I'm going to use this e.l.f. What's it actually called? Lip stain. Wow. And it literally just looks like a marker. It just looks like a Crayola marker. And... It just looks like that, and it's like not even, I don't even know, it barely even works, so. We're just gonna put this on. This like just feels like I'm coloring on my mouth with a Crayola marker. Everything appears so dark on the camera. Here's the finished look. Very pale, looks like I haven't seen sun in years, cause, you know, compare that to like my arm or like my neck or, yeah, anything else. <laughs> So, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, there will be a 1920s makeup look up shortly. So, be on the lookout for that. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. And comment down below if um, you would have a problem doing this to your face every day. You know, like, just take your geraniums and, oh no, <laughs> it's winter. The geraniums aren't in bloom. What do we do now? I don't know. And the fact that you can't enhance your eyelashes because you have to use a match. And what if you mess that up and like sear your eyelashes? I don't know. Anyways, if you enjoyed, give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.